Every follower of Jesus Christ, if fully filled with the Holy Spirit, moves from doubt to determination, confusion to conviction, fear to faith. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be transformed into Jesus, notwithstanding the incredible strength and cunning of the secular movement to keep religion a private thing. Many people are very comfortable with saying the word God in our culture because you don't offend anyone. Muslims, Hindus, Jews, even atheists don't mind that you, using the word God and God bless you or I'll pray to God for you or whatever else way you might use that word. I would challenge you. Use the word Jesus Christ instead of God. He is God, the second person of the Trinity. The two words are interchangeable. And then watch their faces change. They're not so comfortable. And slowly over time, because that's the fact, Catholic Christians have shifted into a more politically correct, comfortable role when they speak about God or their religion. Or they stay silent completely. I ask you the question, how afraid are you? Who knows what co-workers might think? They might actually ask you, what the is that? And you might actually have to bring up your religion. <gasps> At the workplace. <gasps> part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, part of knowing that the Holy Spirit is active in you, is to recognize witness and testimony. They mean the same thing in Greek. It means to bear record to someone. If you love someone, you're not afraid to speak about them. As I gave the example to the children, you should see. Do you remember when you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend in high school? Woo! That's all you talked about. Because that comes naturally from the heart when you love someone. You proclaim your love. To anyone who's willing to hear, you take an advertisement out if you could. I'm in love with the greatest love you should have is Jesus Christ. Are you afraid to speak his name in public? The Bible is very clear, very clear about the Holy Spirit empowering us to witness. John 15, 26 to 27, when the advocate comes, the Holy Spirit, whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Acts 1, sorry, Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Everyone therefore acknowledges me before others. I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Luke 14, 26, whoever comes to me and does not hate father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. In other words, I am your first love. I must be your first love. And then the Great Commission. I've mentioned this often enough. You should know what it means when I say the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Like I say to the children at the end, go! This is where I get go from. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. He does not say teach the Moses Ten Commandments. Everything that I have commanded you. Me, Jesus. How are we supposed to follow the Great Commission if we don't know the commandments of Jesus Christ? You know what this is known by? The Great Commission? It's known as the Great Omission. 
when people want to mock our religion, they go, yeah, yeah, great commission. In your religion, it's the great omission. You don't even know the commandments of Jesus Christ. How are you supposed to do what he says you're supposed to do? Ding, ding. Why do you think I'm pushing? Because I know it's not well known, the commandments of Jesus Christ, what Jesus expects. But it's right there, black and white, or in this case, highlighted in white. Teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded. You didn't say Moses has commanded you. Do what you can. But in a deep way, we as disciples of Jesus Christ have to get accustomed to this. As our world moves us to keep our mouths shut, we as a church need to teach enough. Because obviously, if you don't know the commandments of Jesus Christ, you're going to keep your mouth shut. Because you don't know how to follow the Great Commission. That's why at the same time we're trying to evangelize you through the website, we're trying to teach you so that in a deep way you have what's here to speak out. Because let's face facts, you know, I call them Swiss cheese Catholics, cafeteria Catholics, Sunday Catholics, pick and choose Catholics. They're out there and there's a lot of them. Our Father Hail Mary Catholics, limited, limited. And we have to break that because that is a big reason people are afraid to speak out. They don't think they can be articulate. They don't think they know enough. They're terrified that somebody may actually ask them a question. And the most horrific question, the most terrifying question you can ask a Catholic, where is that in the Bible? Woo! That backs Catholics right off. Because we have failed as a church, we have failed as a Catholic school system to teach our children their Bible. To say to them, you need to read it every day. You need to meditate on the Word. For us, it's on our coffee tables to impress people when they come over to the house. Or more likely, a rosary on your rear view mirror for good luck. I, we have to stop this. And so in a deep way, I would challenge you. Challenge yourselves. Watch the videos. Read your Bible. Take a sheet on the commandments of Jesus Christ. Learn to become articulate so that you can evangelize. Because we have to stop what we're doing. Because we are failing miserably as a church. In proclaiming to people the need to evangelize, to speak out. And as a result, we have a bunch of quiet Catholics that are afraid to sing out loud their love for the Lord in the church. That are afraid to speak out loud for their love for Jesus in the workplace. That are afraid at a barbecue. You got a lot of barbecues coming up this summer. We're all waiting for the good weather to speak out at the barbecues about their primary love for their Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. Having found the Lord, having gotten it, having figured it out, no fear. Fear to faith, doubt to determination, confusion to conviction. Possible? Yes. But only by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you all.